Hey what's up guys, welcome to my updated Zhongli guide for his newest rerun in patch 2.4. This video is going to feature everything you need to know about Zhongli, regarding how to build him efficiently and also how to play him. Zhongli is a character who can be played in different ways, and so in this video I'm going to be covering everything you need to know about that for both a support and a DPS Zhongli. I'm going to be answering every question you may have regarding his weapons, artifacts, talents, teams, and also include a showcase of Zhongli at the end of the video. With that being said, I don't want to waste any of your time, so let's just get right into it. Alright, now the first thing I want to do in this video is actually talk about Zhongli's talents and mainly his playstyles because while he is a simple character who can be played very easily by just utilizing his shield and his burst, he also is someone who has quite a bit of nuance to him in the sense that there's many different ways to play him, different playstyles that can be optimal depending on you and the team that you put him in. In fact, you can either run Zhongli as a pure shield bot who focuses on his very powerful shield to protect you and reduce the resistances of enemies, or as a more standard burst support where yes, you're obviously using his shield as well, but also you using your high scaling burst that will petrify enemies and deal a pretty good amount of damage when you do use it. Lastly, you can also play Zhongli as a physical DPS and while his individual damage isn't as high as some other carries, he can be a good option in like a taser team as an on-field driver, but more on that later in the video. To go into more detail though, let me give you guys a quick breakdown of his kit. First of all, your elemental skill is your most valuable ability. This is what most people think of when they think of Zhongli. It's the very powerful shield that you get from Zhongli's skill when you do hold it. In fact, while you can press and hold this ability and pressing it will summon a pillar that will deal a bit of damage and give you some particles. Holding it is much more efficient as holding your skill will also create this geo construct while also giving you a shield. This shield scales on Zhongli's max HP, deals a bit of damage but especially will reduce the resistance of enemies of anything you're fighting by 20% to every single element as well as physical. What that means is not only will you have a very powerful shield but you'll also gain a lot of damage by reducing the resistance of enemies. Something else you should know about this ability is that the cooldown is 12 seconds when you hold it, 4 seconds when you press it, but the shield lasts for 20 seconds, so you can be able to be perma shielded as long as you have enough HP to keep the shield up. Next up, regarding your elemental burst, this is an ability that kind of has its upsides and its downsides. The strengths of this ability are that number one, it has a really high scaling, as you can see, 835% at level 9 is nothing to scoff at, as well as petrifying enemies for up to 4 seconds at level 10, basically just stunning the enemies in place, making them immobile and unable to deal damage to you. The main downside of this ability though is that the casting time is actually quite long, there's like a whole cinematic when you use it. While this is typically not the biggest deal, it can actually hinder your DPS, especially if your Zhongli isn't that high invested, as you're taking a lot of time using this ability instead of dealing damage on your main DPS. Generally though, if you invest in your Zhongli's burst, give him geo damage, give him crit, any more offensive build that I'll cover in this video, then it will be worth using. Whereas at lower investment or on different builds as a shield bot, while yes you can still use your burst for the petrify effect, if your burst isn't dealing a lot of damage, then it will not be the best ability for you, depending on your team and investment level. Other things you should know are that his cooldown on the burst is 12 seconds, which isn't too long, and the energy cost is 40, which is pretty low, but Zhongli doesn't generate too many particles for himself, so you won't necessarily be spamming this on cooldown, unless you're pairing him with another Geo character, or using something like a Favonius Lance. For your passive talent, Zhongli actually has some pretty powerful ones, notably having a nice HP scaling on his entire kit, his normal attack, his skill, and his burst especially the burst HP scaling is quite relevant, as even if you're building HP on a shield build with something like an HP Sands, which we'll talk about later, your burst can still deal a pretty good amount of damage. Lastly, your other passive just gives you more shield strength whenever your shield takes damage, which isn't the biggest deal, but can prevent your shield from breaking. And lastly, regarding your talent priority, as with a lot of things in this video, it highly depends on how you play this character. For a general build, most players choose to max their shield first to get a tank your shield and then focus on their burst for some damage. And personally, that's what I would recommend for most players, maxing out your shield to ensure that, you know, it doesn't break, because as soon as it breaks, you lose the damage that it gives you and the protection, and also maxing your burst for more damage. If you're a physical Zhongli, a main DPS, maxing your normal attacks first is the way to go. If not, either leveling your shield for a tank your shield or leveling your burst for more damage and a bit longer petrify can both be viable. Alright, now with all that out of the way, let's talk about how to build this character. First of all, regarding your artifacts, there's many different sets and stats, different builds that you can go that all work quite well with Zhongli. The reason for this is because, as I mentioned earlier, he does have quite a few different playstyles, which means there's different ways to build him. A general artifact set that's really good for 
for Zhongli, especially in a shield build, and this can be as a low investment support or even high investment, is going the four piece tenacity of the Middleith set, as this set increases your party member's attack by 20% and also gives you some shield strength whenever your elemental skill hits an opponent. This effect can be triggered even from off field, which means your pillar will just passively be proccing it, and so it is very useful for Zhongli. This set in particular also shines and can make Zhongli even better, especially at low investment or in a shield build, but even if you're using your burst while you will lose out on burst damage, buffing your team's attack, especially with hyper carries like Shao, can definitely be worth it. Another really good set you can go is the 4-piece Noblesse Oblige, which is especially good if you don't have another Noblesse user. If you're using his burst when you have it and you're on a higher investment build, this 20% burst damage you gain is really nice, paired with the 4-piece set that also buffs your party member's attack. Another set worth mentioning is the Archaic Petra. The 2-piece gives you 15% Geo Damage bonus, so for your maximum damage, you can go 2 Petra with 2 Noblesse if you just want a burst support Zhongli. And there's also some situations where the 4-piece Archaic Petra can be viable because of the elemental damage that you're buffing, but in general, it's not my favorite set for Zhongli. Overall, Zhongli has a lot of really good options, Millith being amazing for a supportive playstyle, 2 Noblesse with 2 Petra being the best for maximizing your burst damage, and 4 Noblesse also being very good. Lastly, if you're running Zhongli as a physical DPS, there are many sets you can go, like the 4-piece Pale Flame, the Bolide set, the 4-piece Gladiator, or even using 2-piece sets like the 2 Bloodstained with the 2 Pale Flame. Moving on to your main stats, it's pretty straightforward. As a shield bot, HP is your number one priority. Because of that, if you're only using Zhongli for your shield and not your burst, going for HP on your Sands, Goblet, and Circlet will be the way to go. If you are higher investment and use your burst to petrify enemies and deal damage, then your build can be more flexible. While I still recommend an HP Sands because this will make your shield much tankier and will also give you a decent amount of burst damage through your passive that we talked about earlier. And while attack percent Sands will theoretically give you more damage, it's typically not worth it as HP doesn't make you lose that much and also gives you a much stronger shield. However, for your Goblet and Circlet, you can go for more offensive options like a Geo Goblet and a Crit Rate or Crit Damage Circlet so that your burst actually does does a lot of damage, while you also have a pretty tanky shield through your HP Sands. Lastly, for a physical Zhongli build, you can go once again for offensive options with a crit circlet, a physical goblet this time over Geo to emphasize your normal attack damage, and your Sands can be either HP or attack, although generally as a main DPS, attack will give you a lot more, especially in something like a Taser team, where you won't really need a tankier shield because of the damage resist that Beidou and Sinkju give you, but I will cover that team later in the video, and just in general for a physical Zhongli, attack percent Sands will give you more damage. Now moving on to Zhongli's weapons, once again there's a lot of really good options depending on how you play him. For a standard burst support type build where you maximize both his shield and his burst damage, your best option will be the Staff of Homa by far. The reason for this is because the Staff of Homa gives you an insane amount of crit damage on the stat, a high base attack, and then an effect that will give you more HP and more attack based on your max HP. Because of that, this was a weapon that was made for an HP scaling character like Zhongli or Hu Tao, so it's definitely a spear you can use on Zhongli if you have it. That being said, I've noticed that my Staff of Homa is generally on other characters, and since Zhongli has so many other good spears as well, that's really not that big of a deal. If you're trying to maximize damage, any 5-star weapon, such as the Jade Wing Spear or the Geo Polearm, or even some of the 4-star weapons with crit stats like the Deathmatch or the Black Cliff Pole can be very good options. Personally, I really like the Deathmatch as a Battle Pass option, as it gives you a lot of stats, 36.8% crit rate, and also an effect that gives you some attack. And so any offensive pull arm can work well for a burst support Zhongli. Another example of this is the Lithic Spear, especially depending on how many Liwei characters you have, and even something like the Favonius Lance, giving you a high base attack, some energy recharge which is decent for you, and then an effect that will generate particles for your entire team. And so as you can see, there's a lot of really good options for a burst support Zhongli, with all of the 5 stars giving you similar amount of damage, except Homa, which is obviously the best. But other than just offensive pull arms, you can even go for more supportive ones, especially for a shield bot build. This is where something like Black Tassel can come in, which is not only a good free-to-play option for Zhongli in general, but is especially good and mainly good when you're running Zhongli as a shield bot purely for his shield, which can be a good build even at low investment, as this weapon, especially when you level it up to 90, will give you just a ton of HP percent to make your shield stronger. The other option that can be sometimes better than the Black Tassel for a shield bot build is the Favonius Lance. If your team needs energy, let's say you're running like a Shao, and you want to give them those particles from the Favonius's effect. Lastly, if you're running a physical DPS Zhongli and want to maximize his damage, there's mainly two options.
Legends. Crescent Pike is really good, especially with Refinement, and can oftentimes be your best in slot. And Staff of Homa as well can also be amazing. Overall, there's many good weapons depending on how you play Zhongli. Really good weapons for every playstyle, with the best ones typically being 5 stars if you have them, like Staff of Homa, or Black Tassel or Favonius for a shield bot build, and then Crescent Pike being amazing for a physical Zhongli. Moving on to Zhongli's constellations, these are some that are decent but really not needed for this character. The reason why in particular Zhongli doesn't need constellations is because he's so useful just from his base kit, from his powerful shield, and his burst if you choose to use it, that the buffs that his constellations give him, while they can be nice and convenient, aren't needed at all and aren't the biggest upgrades. With that being said, Zhongli does have a few useful constellations, notably his second one that grants him a shield when he uses his burst, so he can use his burst and then not have to hold his E, instantly get a shield, which makes using your burst even better and allows you to save some time in your rotation. Your fourth constellation will also give you more utility by increasing the AoE of your burst and especially increasing the petrify effect by another two seconds, so stunning the enemies for longer, which can be nice, uh, once again, as a quality of life upgrade. For the other constellations, your first one just gives you a second pillar, which is okay, it can generate particles more easily, and will just allow you to place two pillars at the same time, but it really isn't significant, and so I don't recommend pulling for your C1. Your C3 and 5, as with every character, just increase your talent levels, which is okay. And lastly, for your 6 constellation, this will basically just heal you from your shield. Your Jade shield is going to heal you. 40% of the incoming damage will be converted to that HP. Now, while in general this is nice to allow Zhongli to fill your healer slot in your team, give you healing as well as a shield, it can have negative synergy with characters who want to stay low HP like Hu Tao or a Staff of Homa user, so it's something you have to be cautious about before activating, but it can be something that is nice to have in certain teams. Overall, his constellations are really not needed. My favorite one is his second constellation to just shield you while you use your burst, but compared to some other 5 stars, his constellations are not the strongest. Now, regarding Zhongli's teams, as you may know, Zhongli is a character who is very flexible. Because of that, while there are some teams that really need him, which I'll cover in this section, you can also kind of just fit him as a universal support in pretty much any team. When there is a flex slot that you want to fill with a support character, you don't know who to pick, and you just need a fourth option, Zhongli can oftentimes be very good because of his very tanky shield, his universal resistance shred, and also his high scaling burst that will petrify enemies. Because of that, teams that have flexible slots, like this one right here, that whose last slot can be many different characters, are teams where you can generally fit Zhongli as the flex slot and be happy with it. That being said, regarding the teams that want Zhongli specifically, there are quite a few. Teams that really need a shield, right? So for example, if you're charge shotting on someone like Ganyu in a melt team and you have to stay close and you don't want your charge attacks to get interrupted, having a shield character like Zhongli can be essential. The same can be said for a Hu Tao, especially if she's C0, as you want to be spending your stamina offensively using charge attacks instead of having to dodge all the time, and even if you do have her first constellation, Zhongli is still very useful, as giving a shield to Hu Tao allows you to stay low HP, not be afraid of dying, and even run a team without a healer by just running Zhongli and Sing Chu, who will also give you damage reduction, and while he isn't a main healer, he does give you a bit of healing through his rain swords. Other teams where Zhongli shines are Geo teams. For example, I tend to run my Ito with Zhongli. As for Geo teams in general, they will generate particles for Zhongli and allow you to play more quick swappy style. And on top of that, Geo characters tend to have a lot of synergy with one another. When you run Goro, he'll give you more buffs based on how many Geo characters are in your party. And when you run two Geo characters together, like Zhongli and Albedo, not only do they have good synergy with one another, like Albedo generating particles for you, and both of which being nice off-field supports who can assist your carry from off-field, but you'll also gain access to the Geo Res which is really good and will increase your overall team's damage when you're protected by a shield on top of decreasing the geo resistance of enemies. Because of that, while Zhongli is a flexible option, Zhongli and Albedo can also be a flexible core to many different teams like Hu Tao and Sing Chu or Xiao and Jin. And obviously, as I said, a lot of other geo characters work well with Zhongli too, someone like Ito in particular who wants to be shielded while he's charge attacking in order for him to be able to DPS do a large charge attack string without taking too much damage. And so in general, as you can see, characters who want a shield in order to be more optimal to not have to dodge or get their attacks interrupted are characters that really want Zhongli or some form of a shield on top of him being very flexible and good in geo teams. Lastly, I want to say that his universal resistance shred does decrease the anemo resistance of opponents. And the reason this is relevant is because anemo resistance in particular is notoriously hard to reduce. So if you're running an anemo carry like Xiao, having Zhongli can be a nice option for that resistance shred and the shield that he provides. Lastly, I believe for physical Zhongli, the reason why why I think he's underrated and honestly a viable option is because he can be a driver in a taser team, allowing your off 
Shield supports to shine very well by pairing him with characters like Beto, Fischl, and Sing Chu, who all deal massive amounts of damage from off-field, and then you can run Zhongli on a physical build with a shield that will be extremely tanky, even if you're not building him HP, because Beidou and Sing Chu both give you a ton of damage resist, making your shield effectively unbreakable while also giving your Zhongli a lot of damage. Because of that, he's a viable option for this team, and you can also do some other things like running Yunjin instead of Sing Chu, and then having a sort of double electro, a double geo team that can also work quite well. All right, so with that being said, I'm now going to do a floor 12 clear with the team that you see right now. This is a full geo team where my Zhongli is going to be not only a shielder, which is vital for my Ito's charge attack strings, but also a very powerful burst support who's going to be spamming his burst on cooldown, petrifying enemies, and dealing a lot of damage. I'm using this team for the showcase instead of a physical Zhongli because I feel like most players are going to use Zhongli as this sort of geo support for his shield and his burst, so that is what I want to showcase. Keep in mind, some enemies in the current abyss, like the Primo Geo Vish app, have very high geo resistance which is where Zhongli's shield comes in clutch and will help me clear it. With that being said, I hope this guide was helpful and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go. So yeah, that's about it. Zhongli is one of my favorite characters in the game, one of the most powerful supports for casual players who just want to shield, and even for late game players like me, who once again enjoy his resistance shred and his powerful burst. With that being said, I really hope this guide was helpful. If there's anything I want to add, it will be in a pinned comment. Do stay tuned for my Ganyu guide, which I've been working on, but I'm kind of delayed because of school and stuff, so my bad. But it will be out soon. I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to like and sub if you're new. Follow me on Twitch if you want to catch me live. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.